people, um, if you could tell people about Jerome Champagne. Who are you? What is it that you're bringing to FIFA? Should you be elected? What are you trying to change about all of FIFA? You know, um, I'm not maybe known as a former top player, but I'm very well known in the middle of football. Uh, because, as you know, I've been the uh, Deputy General Secretary of FIFA and I worked 11 years in FIFA helping the federations around the world. Uh, and I'm quite known in South Africa because I was uh, uh, helping Mr. Blatter when uh, he, he had to fight uh, European egoism um, to bring the World Cup to your, to your continent and to your, to your country. Um, if you go on my, on my website, you will see myself, my wife, and my two kids at that time with, yeah. uh, with Madiba and Nelson Mandela. Because the day after Mr. Blatter opened the envelope on that Saturday, 15th of May 2004, uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela wanted to thank Mr. Blatter and myself for what we have done for South Africa. Uh, so, you know, I may not be a, a public star, and I don't want to be that. But I'm someone who is uh, very well known in, uh, in the circles of football around the world and in Africa as well, because people in Africa know what I've done for, for your continent and also for development programs uh, in my years in FIFA. Mr. Champagne, why do you want to be the FIFA president? What is it that you feel that you're going to be bringing uh, that's different to the organization that uh, the former presidents have brought before? That What are you trying to do differently that the other candidates perhaps may not be doing differently? First, I, I, I want to continue what has been done correctly because you have seen the past month. FIFA is, is wrong in everything. Uh, they have tried to do uh, 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 accusing Mr. Blatter of everything. It was even a FIFA bashing. Uh, while all the people, including uh, some of my opponents, were, were in their position thanks to Mr. Blatter. What I want to do also is to tell everyone that we need to continue what has been done correctly, development programs, taking competitions all around the world, development of women's football. But at the same time, we need to change what needs to be changed. And, you know, unlike my opponents, I've been tested because I was at the highest echelon of FIFA during 11 years. I've been tested in very severe crises, such as the one FIFA went through in 2001. You know, every four years, every four years, we have always the attempts by UEFA to regain control on world football. And you know, it's not acceptable. UEFA is doing a good job, but UEFA should stay in Europe. And what is clear for me is that we need a stronger FIFA in order to, to govern football in this term of globalization, but also to correct inequalities. I'm glad that we've touched on the FIFA scandals of 2015. Let's, let's look at those. And it's, it'll always be a question, you know, going leading up to the elections to all the FIFA candidates that FIFA is in trouble right now. It's, it's not finding itself out of the trouble that it's in. What is Jerome Champagne looking to do to restore, firstly, the integrity of FIFA? Uh, secondly, to, to restore investor trust in FIFA, because uh, also that's, that's a big deal where business is now threatening to pull out. And, and what is Jerome Champagne then looking to do to, to, to restore the faith of, of the, you know, the normal man on the, on, on the street in FIFA as, a, as, as an organization? What are you looking to do to bring back FIFA and, and, and where it used to be? So I was preaching that uh, since, um, I've been preaching that since January 2012. So listen, I have a record when I was a FIFA, I have a record because I was pushed out, and I have a record of consistency claiming for more transparency, more, more ethics, and also more efficiency in the administration. For example, I've proposed to create a division for professional football to better ensure compliance of the FIFA regulations on transfers, to develop programs to help the federations around the, wo the world to develop their pro leagues and their pro clubs. You know, my program is, is public. Among the, can uh, the candidates, if you go on the website sportingintelligence.com, they have ranked their candidates according to, the, um, to their programs and their manifestos, and I have the pleasure to have been ranked the first. So not only I take eight commitments, but I take 50 detailed measures which can be financed, and I know how to do it, which can be implemented for the sake of FIFA and the sake of football. Another question that perhaps um, a lot of candidates may not want to touch on, but people are going to ask this question nonetheless. Your thoughts on uh, Seb Blatter, Michel Platini, and some of the FIFA executives who've been implicated in these scandals of bribery and corruption. What are your thoughts? What have been your thoughts on what's happened in FIFA since May? It's very sad. It's very sad. 
But at the same time, as I said publicly, I, I'm sure that history will judge Mr. Blatter better than, than the current news. He has done so much for football. And I tell you, I was at his side on the 6th of July 2000 when the vote was 12 for Germany, 11 for South Africa. And uh, who, defeated, who defeated South Africa for the World Cup 2006? It was European egoism. It was UEFA. It was a machinery and of the big clubs and the big companies which wanted the World Cup in Europe. So I know that what Mr. Blatter has said, but unlike my opponents, I will never say that Mr. Blatter is the only person responsible. If you look at the past campaign between January and May 2015, all what has been developed by people like Platini and UEFA and all the others, including some of the continents today, is to blame one person, Mr. Blatter, for all the problems. And that's really a form of bashing which is unfair. It's February 26 is the day that, you know, it, it will be a reckoning for a lot of, for, for, for the five of you men. Uh, pretty much your futures are at stake here, your reputations are at stake here. The world will be watching uh, very closely to see who will lead world football, who will lead the biggest sport you know, in the world. With everything that's happened with FIFA in the last couple of months now, there will be questions, there will be answers, there will be theories, there will be conspiracies. A lot will be going on around that period. What is your final say to football lovers out there? What is your final say to the executive committee of FIFA? What is your final say to the man you're looking to succeed, Mr. Seb Blatter? Basically, what is your final say to, if you were to campaign in a very short and brief uh, couple of sentences, what are you saying to the world of football as the FIFA presidential candidate? I am, I am someone from football. I have two clubs in my art. One is the French club Saint-Etienne and, and, and Barcelona. Uh, my first football match, I've listened on the radio. I was 12. It was the final of the FF. Uh, the final of the French FA Cup in 1970. In 1974, some Catalan friends of my parents took me to the Camp Nou. It was my first match in Barcelona. So I'm one of I'm one of you guys. I'm I'm a football lovers, and for me, um, I consider that clubs are to football what our families are to our societies. Secondly, I've been tested. I'm someone. I'm a citizen of the world. I'm bringing the experience of FIFA. You know. Some of my opponents are saying, OK, you know what? I will be a non-executive president. The, the power will be given to the administration. It's not what I want. I do believe in democracy. And if we elect a president of FIFA, it has to be the real president. Myself, I'm not running for the honorary presidency. I'm running for the real one because I want to make a difference. And I know how to make it because that's what I've done when I was in FIFA during 11 years.